Facebook. <laughs> it's Ariana Jarrett for your tango. If people are there, hopefully you're all joining in. It's a holiday weekend, so Woo! that was my official phone drop of the night. I'm looking if anybody knows of a good, you know, system for holding your phone in place so you can be hands free. Please let me know in the comments. Anyway, say hi. I see the people are here, so hopefully people will say hello. Let me know you're here. Drop your name in the comments, and if you have any questions. Okay, great. I see people. Hello. Raman Preet, nice to see you. It's good to see you. I'm going to see. I'm going to like your hello because I'm so excited. Um, Federico said call you, but sometimes people say that at the beginning of Facebook Live, and... Um, I'm on Facebook Live, so I can't call anybody. Hi, Mary. Hi, Victor. Victor Hugo. That's awesome. I love Les Miserables. So glad you're here. Teresa, Rawa, Kate. Hi, hi in Canada. Um, oh, it's Canada Day today, right? Is it, it's it today or was it yesterday? I think it's today. Happy Canada Day. If I'm a day late, sorry. And we're almost here for Fourth of July. Hi, um, Stephanie, Mike, Diana. Nobody said if it really is Canada Day today, so I hope it is. I'm good. Uh, Raman Preet just asked um, how I am, and I'm really good. It's been a nice, mellow weekend. Hi, Antonio. Um, hi, Ricky. Thank you for the hair compliment. Um, I wish I knew the last name of the guy who did it, and then I would say, but his name's Jericho. He's awesome. Um, not did it tonight. Like, I'm not like, you know obviously that much just who cuts it um let's see hi becky in georgia oh july 1 was canada day so it was yesterday okay so happy day after and we're right in between um fourth of july hi mateo just here for the nudes that's a bummer well my lipstick is a nude color so that's pretty cool um hi to jeff and leonard leonard says that he can't get a girlfriend so leonard um if you want to actually like have a question about that, you know, maybe drop in the comments and say what it is that you're having trouble with. Where are you looking for a girlfriend? What are you looking for? And how old are you? And all of that. Um, let's see. It looks like, oh, so before I get started, I see that Mary had a question. Um, oh, thanks, Victor. He said I look good and relaxed. I, I should, because I've pretty much done nothing other than sleep this weekend. Because as of this evening, I get my kids for two weeks straight. So I've been just resting. Um, so just before I get started, my name is Ariana Jarrett. For anybody who's here for the first time, I'm a senior editor at Your Tango. And um, just for a little bit of background, I have a master's in social work. But, and I was a divorce mediator um, for a pretty long time. But tonight, when we're talking here, nothing is, you know, this is not therapeutic advice. This isn't any legal advice at all. Um, it's just shooting the shit with some friends and answering questions. And, you know, everybody is so supportive and lovely here. And, you know, people like to help each other out. So hopefully we'll keep that going. Um, hi to Amanda. So Leonard, I think you're the same one who said you couldn't get a girlfriend earlier, right? So just let me know, or if you're another guy who can't get a girlfriend, let me know why. Let me know what's going on so I can answer your question. Um, oh, wow. Gina has a really, um, really, really tough question. Um, she said, how to bring bra back your love life after losing a six-month-old? And first of all, Gina, my heart goes out to you. I cannot even fathom what you're going through and what you've been going through. I don't know how long it's been since you lost your child, and I'm so, so sorry that that happened. And, you know, I think that it really is just a matter of making sure that you both have had the time that you need to um, adjust again, you know, and, and to start to just, you know, I don't think that, I, I, I know people who have lost their children, and I don't think that, you ever go back to your norm as far as just who you are. Um, not as far as, you know, your love life being able to revive again. I've actually, there was one couple in particular I know who lost their child and I, I, I mean, they were pretty close beforehand, but I think they, they did, you know, really like see each other as a team supporting each other. And I think that the more the two of you, um, hopefully you're already doing that, 
the more you're spending time together and checking in with each other about where you are emotionally, um, getting whatever support each one of you needs separately and together, um, and you're, you see that you're there for each other, and then if you can start doing little things that make you feel connected and get you laughing again and doing fun things again, you know, maybe if you can, I don't know, you know, what your finances are like, but if you can travel or at least take a road trip and, you know, sort of separate yourself from the space you've been in and, um, you know, try to get a few different fun things going on. Um, oh, Gina, you said it's going on the one year anniversary. So, you know, I, I don't know where you guys are at this point with it, but my suggestion would just be try to come together as a team as much as you possibly can and um, and just, you know, respect each other and, and have a conversation with each other, you know, and I would just, I wouldn't even try to like do anything as far as, you know, like, I'm not going to suggest anything like, you know, seducing, you know, your husband the way that if this was like a marriage that was having other problems, um, I would just have a straight out conversation and just say, where are we both as far as our love life, our sex life, and just have a really open and like, and, and you know, so I would start it off by just saying, I just want to hear where you are and I'm not going to judge where you are. And um, I'm going to ask you not to judge where I am and let's just touch base. And I think the best thing the two of you can do is find out from each other what you each need in order to get your love life back. So um, hopefully that, you know, helps somewhat. And I, I'm just, I'm sorry that you're going through that. Um, if you want to add anything else, anything else more specific, you're welcome to, you know, add that into the comments. But yeah, my, my first suggestion would be, you know, try to do some fun things together and just have a really, really open, compassionate talk with each other. Um, oh, you said that you're trying to start over again in that area. So perfect. You know, there you go. Um, and thanks for coming here to ask about it. I know that that's a really tough Tough, tough, tough situation. I'm scrolling back right now because I saw that Mary had a question and I want to not skip it. Um, Mary Tipton said, I've been single for two months. I had a few dates where the guys were train wrecks. I devoted maybe, um, I devoted maybe it's better to focus on me, but I know if I see my ex move on, that will be so hard. Well, you know, I don't too months post breakup and I don't know how long you guys were together Mary but two months is not a whole lot and you know there's that theory that it takes at least half the time that you were in a relationship to get over it I don't think that that's you know um a hard and fast rule like I don't think most things are hard and fast rules but you know I don't know where the two months is and if you guys were together for 10 years or for three months um but I really think that the important thing is to try not to focus on where your ex is as far as moving on because he's your ex now you know he's not your boyfriend anymore and he's not going to be your boyfriend and so if he moves on he moves on um in fact you know i would really encourage you to just if you can and i've never been able to do this but if you can um if you can completely not even look but you know at his um social media, not be in touch with him and just not even know what's going on in his life for, you know, give yourself at least two to three months, even from now, if you haven't been doing that already, um, so that you won't be thinking about where he is, or you won't start to assume based on things that you're seeing. Cause you know, so much on social media, sometimes you see your something that your ex or somebody that you have a crush on says on their Facebook post and you think it means something about somebody else and you can be totally wrong and off or they could be seeing somebody and you'd have no idea based on what you're seeing. So I would just remove him and when he's going to move on from your equation and then just, you know, give it some time. I don't think that, you know, a few dates in two months isn't really a whole lot. And, um, you know, maybe just look at where you met those people and maybe there's another, sorry, my dog plays tug of war while I'm doing this, so <laughs> I just hit myself in the face with her teddy bear. Um, you know, I, I think maybe you can try some other, if you're doing dating sites, maybe add a few. Um, if you've met them in person, maybe try some dating sites or let your friends know that you're available um, to be set up if you want to be set up. 
And um, I would just try to take your time before you go out and you know, just to see who they are. Because I think if you at least just kind of check a little bit about them and make sure that they're the kind of person that you are interested in, you may not have a love match right away, but at least hopefully you'll avoid some of the train wreck um, kind of situation. So I don't know what a train wreck means to you, but if you kind of define to yourself, okay, these things would make somebody a train wreck and sort of pre-check for that before you go out. Um, okay, so I'm going to now see if there are, no, Mary, I didn't skip you. I just, I saw Gina's question about you know her husband and her baby and so I wanted to answer that one right away um oh hi Chris you're back it's good to see you I'll say hi to a few people Timothy said everyone's leaving but you know what it's totally cool that's what kind of happens here on Facebook live is people jump on in the beginning try to figure out what it is and then a bunch of you hang out so that's cool and um it's all good um Gina Davis says she needs a boyfriend so maybe Leonard you need a girlfriend Maybe that works. Um, Teresa, I really, I want to set up like a matchmaking service here. I think it's too complicated because you guys are all over the country and all over the world, but I kind of like that idea. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I'm going to give some thought. If anybody has any ideas about that, first of all, I'll tell you this again at the end of the show, but my email is ariana, A-R-I-A-N-N-A -N -N -A, at yourtango.com. And, um... You can send me an email. I don't know if you have any ideas about matchmaking or anything else, then send me ideas and let me know. Um, so Teresa wrote, my boyfriend and I had three, had three major breakups now, um, back together as friends and sex. He says, let's see how it will play out naturally. I want a relationship. He's not ready after he divorced a year ago, was married for 26 years. Um, he stopped spending the night in February. He says he doesn't want to get, oh, you know what, Teresa, this happens sometimes where when I'm doing Facebook live, it cuts off the messages. So I'm sorry, I can't, it cut off your message after, um, he doesn't want to get, and so I don't know what that says, but I'm going to guess that you're saying he doesn't want to get like too close, um, at this point. And I have to say I mean, first of all, when you say he divorced a year ago and he was married for 26 years, I don't know if you mean the divorce was final a year ago or they separated a year ago. But um, also, I guess this is going to be statistics night. There's like a theme after of every night. Um, so typically with a divorce, for most people, it takes two to three years at minimum. I think it's like two years at minimum after the divorce is final meaning not when you separate, but when you've signed your paperwork, you've sent it into the court, and it's been returned to you stamped by the court. So that can take a long time. So from the point that that um, clock starts ticking, right, you get your papers back stamped, um, that's when the healing starts. And it can take like about two years until somebody has their new, whatever their new normal is established. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing like for for Gina, who lost her baby, it might be a similar, because it has to do with the grieving process that people go through. Um, and there's so much that you're grieving when you're divorcing. So the fact, like the timing of how long his marriage was, and also the timing of how recently his divorce was, lead me to believe, like, I, I mean, I really think that probably sincerely, this is not about anything particular about you, Teresa, as far as how he sees you as the kind of person he would or wouldn't want to spend his life with, I, it's just really, really hard to jump back into committing yourself after you've gone through a long-term marriage and divorce. And his was a long-term marriage. I mean, 26 years, that's a significant amount of time of somebody's life. So it's like, I've tried to make it sort of a point in my life, just knowing that, having been around as many divorcing couples as I've been, um, I, I, anything I say to you guys, you can pretty much, pretty much just assume that any advice I'm giving, I don't follow. Okay. We'll just, I'll make that disclaimer right now. But basically I think that if you, I make it like a policy. I try not to date guys who are not finished with their divorce yet. 
And it's not because like some people think that that's cheating. If you're still married, I feel like if you sign papers and you're, or you've established that you're separating and you're in separate places, I don't think that's cheating personally, but they're about to go through a whole bunch of changing. And Teresa, your boyfriend just went through a whole bunch of stuff. So I think the key now is going to be for you to figure out, he's already told you, this is like a friends with benefits kind of thing. And he's like marking that line in the sand by not staying overnight. And if you try to get him to stay overnight, or you try to get him to make that more of a long-term relationship, you're just going to destroy the friendship too. So if, if, if you're only sleeping with him because you think it's going to lead to a relationship, then I would suggest that you just call it quits on the friends with benefits part and just be friends. If you're cool, like if you can accept, like if you just want somebody to have as like a fuck buddy and so you're cool with him being a friends with benefit and you're cool with the idea that he's going to go home afterwards, then go for it. But I would very strongly suggest that you recognize for yourself. I'm not saying you'll never be together, but he is not looking for that right now. And also a lot of people when they get divorced, like they want to go out and like, they haven't dated since they were kids essentially, you know? And so they want to see what's out there. And that has nothing to do with you not being good enough. But I think that's just kind of human nature when you're coming out of a long-term married relationship like that. So he probably is going to need to see other women before he's ready if he's ever also a lot of people who get divorced don't ever want to get married again so I don't know if you want a marriage so that's my advice is either accept the friends with benefits as what it is or just be friends or and if that's too painful then maybe you just need a break totally for a few months so that you can move on um, but I don't think it looks good for possibly having another relationship um, Oh, Gina and, and Victor, Victor's reaching out to Gina now. This is so cute. Okay, Frederico needs a girlfriend too. I feel like everybody needs to put their location in here. Um, oh, I'm totally going to butcher your name because also my eyes are so bad, but Maruha said, um, enjoy yourself better alone than in bad company. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I think that's it's for, um, for Mary who went out with the two guys who were train wrecks. I totally agree with you. Just go out and have fun. I really just approach dating as fun and then if it's a train wreck at least it's a good story to tell your friends um okay tony gordon says what advice do you have for someone who has lots of guys that want to take you out but the one you really want to be with is romantic with you but doesn't take you out anywhere or spend as much time with you as you would really like um well, Tony, so when you say that he's romantic with you, does that mean you guys have sex? I mean, you don't have to say that on Facebook. Like, some people don't want to talk about that on Facebook. I get it. Like, I'll talk about anything on Facebook. But um, if that's what you mean, is that, you know, he just wants to come, the one you really like just wants to come over and have a friends with benefits relationship without saying it's friends with benefits relationship. Because if he's not taking you out, you're not going to do anything else, and he's not, you know, referring to you as his girlfriend or making advances towards that, then, um, you know, my thought would be that it could be a few different things. I mean, I, I hate doing the thing where, you know, I say to you, you know, what is it about you that you want to be with the guy who doesn't want to be with you? But, you know, there's probably some truth to that. I mean, I have to look at that all the time. And, I know lots of people who do. I mean, it could be like, I would really look at like, what is it about this guy that you really, really like that you like so much? And what is it about the other guys that you don't feel matches up? I mean, sometimes I know there's just like a chemistry connection kind of a thing, but you know, I would just kind of look at that and you know, maybe you need, maybe tonight's going to be break night. Like maybe you need to take a break from him too. You're now the third person tonight. I'm saying take a break. Like maybe you need to tell him that you guys need a break for a while. And because you know, I'm kind of going to assume, and I know I shouldn't, that you've told him that you want to go out and you've told him that you want to um, 
spend more time with him and that he's resisted that, if you haven't already said that to him, please say it to him because nobody can do anything for you that you haven't asked them to do. Um, but if you have, and that's not what he wants, then I would really approach him with, you know what? I know I've asked you to spend more time with me and to take me out and you've said you don't want to. And so I'm going to respect that you don't want that, or, you know, that's not something that you're going to give me right now. And in the same way, I hope that you'll respect that I need to, you know, not see you for a while because I need to be able to find somebody who wants, I want a relationship. I want somebody to take me out. I want to be treated this way, that way, whatever it is, the ways are that you want to be treated. And so I'm going to just going to take a break a little bit so I can, you know, get some distance from my feelings for you. And, um, and, and then we'll see, you know, let's say let's, we'll touch base in a month or two and see where things are. And then he'll really do one of two things probably, you know, either he'll say, all right, cool. And he won't really care. And in that case, like that's also pretty good confirmation that he doesn't feel the same way about you that you feel about him. And so why stick around with somebody who's willing to let you go? And, or he'll say, no, wait, if it's that important, you know, I want to be with you. And so tell me what you need and I'll be with you. Or it could be sort of a combo where, you know, he says the first thing and he lets you go. And then within the month or two, he realizes that he really, you know, is missing you and he wants you back. And then you'll see where you are at that point. And I would just be really careful that you make it really clear if you do get back together that you're not going back to the way things were. Um, so that's what I, I really think that probably having this like pseudo friends with benefits without talking about it relationship with this guy is probably keeping you from liking the other guys more. William said that I say I'm a lot. I you know what? It's the way that I think. Sorry. Uh, hi, Kim. I, my friend Kim, another editor is here and I love her. So I'm saying hi. Um, Ella is very curious to read your <laughs> questions right now. I think she wants to answer. Um, let's see. Oh, more single people. See, maybe we need to keep like some kind of an ongoing database, but Ella, <laughs> let me see the screen. <laughs> okay. Um, Victor Hugo said 44 year old Hispanic, um, divorced male, financially and emotionally secure, looking for a secure girlfriend. Samuel said, hi, single, stay single. Um, Tracy said, my guy who I've been dating for a year and a half is struggling to commit and admit that we are in fact in a relationship and won't admit it. Um, I've been hanging on waiting for a year and a half. Should I temporarily walk away and give him a chance to miss me and come to me? I love him. And oh, and Tracy, your message got cut off by the ghouls at Facebook too. Sorry about that. So I don't know what you said after that, but I get the point. Um, I, you know, I, with something like that, so you've been together for a year and a half and you know, when you say he won't admit that you're in a relationship, maybe it's because you're not, you know, like maybe he doesn't see it that way or maybe he doesn't have the language to say he wants an open relationship or he's too scared to say that or to say that he you know, wants to be polyamorous. And I don't know how you feel about something like that. You know, that's still a relatively new concept for a lot of people. So you may not be cool with that. Um, so I think that kind of the two of you really, to me, need to be honest with each other and you with yourself about what this really is. And, you know, if he, if it, if he's not willing to say that, you're his girlfriend and if he, because he doesn't ever want to have a girlfriend, he's just somebody who doesn't like to have titles and doesn't like to have, um, commitments. And usually when somebody doesn't like to have titles and they don't like to have commitments, it's because they want an open relationship. Um, or they don't even want an open relationship. They just want to be able to do whatever they want to do when they want to do it. So I would spend some time thinking for yourself first. Um, do you want to be with him? even if what he wants is to be in an open relationship. Um, in which case you can talk to him and say, Hey, look, you know, I'm cool with both of us seeing other people. We can be in an open relationship, 
but I do want to acknowledge that this is a relationship. And then, you know, I would have set out exactly what it is that a relationship means to you because everybody defines a relationship differently. Um, if you think about it more and um, if when you're thinking about it, you're not ever going to be cool with an open relationship and you want him to be committed to you and to be your boyfriend and to only be with you, then own that and tell him that. And if he's not willing to do it, then yeah, I would do the same. It's take a break night <laughs> over here at your tango on Facebook live. Um, yeah, I would, I would give him, there's an article we have and I'll try to remember to link it into the comments later or maybe Kim if you're still on there if and I saw Tina too if you guys are here hi Tina by the way I didn't say hi to you um and you can drop in a link there's um an article written by one of our experts whose name is Clayton Olson he has a lot of really great um articles especially about understanding men and one of them is about this thing called the no contact rule which is um it's called like the only chance of having getting your boyfriend back is having no con, con no contact. And basically, I forget the exact amount of time, but it's kind of what I said before. You tell you know tell the person that you're not going to be talking to them, and tell yourself for it's either two or three months. And over that course of time, you just go do your thing and move on. And then at the end of the time period that he suggests, you reconvene with yourself and see if you still want them back. And then also, if you do want them back, you can check in with them and see if they still want you also. And what's really interesting, you know, the article says that it's it's a guaranteed to work. And it is because at the end of the three months, one of two things is gonna happen. You're either gonna want each other back or you're gonna know that you're over it. And in that way, it'll have worked for you too. So I'm gonna suggest, I'm gonna try to find the article on no contact, unless it's already been dropped in here. And I think that you, um, um, William, I might say it more right now. I feel like, um, I might say it more. Um, <laughs> you can be angry with me too. Uh, so I would say, Tracy, no contact rule is probably the best thing for you. Let's see, there are a lot of people who are really happy to be single. Uh, if people, oh, I said, uh, William, instead of, um. Hi, Chad, it's good to see you. Chad said, if people worry about their exes and trying to move on, it can cause more drama than um, there should be. I think what you mean, I think you're probably talking about Mary's question earlier and saying if you're worried about whether or not your ex moves on first and yeah I agree I mean don't I wouldn't worry about what your ex is doing it's really not your business anymore because they're your ex um, a lot of people saying hi to Victor so that's good Chris said that Leonard can't do something so I don't know what that was all about I feel like I miss out I you know I come back here after every week's show and I read just so you know like I come back and I read all of your comments because they're the most interesting things going on between all of you that I miss. Beverly said, if you use a dating site, I suggest Skype. Um, so I think that, Beverly, you mean like using Skype before you meet? Yeah, you, people can use, you can use Skype or FaceTime and have a conversation beforehand. Some people don't like to do that. Some people get a little bit touchy for some reason. I think just because internet privacy, we don't, so many people just don't even understand. I, think, I don't think any of us understand what's actually private or not private, to be honest. Um, um, now, see, now I'm gonna be super conscious and I'm gonna say it more and more and more for you, William, because we're buddies now. Uh, so, yeah, Skype is definitely a way, but I, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with just saying you're gonna meet up for coffee, but you can check the best thing. I think I may have talked about it before, but okay, I stick to a fairly low level of Google stalking of people. I, I try to stay to a very low, because I don't like to know too much about somebody, but I do like, I mean, especially as a woman, I like to confirm that they are an actual human being who does exist under the name that they say they exist under and has a job they say they have and is not married or otherwise in some kind of a relationship. And when I say I like to confirm that they have that job, it's not because I'm out there looking for doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs in particular, it's because it's just to me a way of verifying that they're 
not pulling a scam or doing something creepy. And so you can go, okay, so this is my favorite trick to do. So everybody's gonna learn my favorite trick right now. So you can take a screenshot or, or download the person's profile picture and then go to Google Images. And when you're on, the, when you go to Google, you click on images, there's a little icon in the search bar that's a camera. And if you click on the camera, you can upload the person's picture and it will search the entire internet for that person. And it doesn't always work because some people use a different picture than they have um, on their social media or anywhere else. And some places don't have, some people just don't have their picture anywhere really available. I know, especially a lot of lawyers and lawyers and doctors, you know, it seems to me, keep their stuff all like locked down. Uh, but I've found a lot of, a few sketchy people over time doing things that way. I found one guy who was, I don't think he was married, but he was in a very serious committed relationship. And another guy who's like ex-wife and fiance had disappeared in some bizarro circumstance. And like, there were a few other things that I found. One guy who was using pictures from some Czechoslovakian model or something. So um, that's another way I think to feel a little bit better before you meet somebody. Let's see. Don Felipe said, okay, bring on the nude pics, please. Thanks. You know, Don, did you know that you're not even allowed to do that? Like, even if I, let's say I wanted to do like a strip show for you guys here on Facebook, I wouldn't be allowed. Like, your tango would be like blocked from Facebook. So that's, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to send them to you anyway, but that's just not a reasonable request. Okay, let's see. Hi, Casey. Hi, Teresa, Elise. Oh, Stanley said you're naturally beautiful. That's sweet. Thank you. Kion said, did you see my question? I did not. So let me see if I can scroll back and find one from you. So, and thank you for asking instead of just thinking that I didn't because I do try to answer every question. I saw that you said you were so sorry to Gina, which was very sweet. And I'm going to look, I don't want to spend too much time looking, but I am going to look for your question. I'm not seeing it. So Kion, I don't see it here. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. If you want to put your question back into another comment, then hopefully I'll see it. And if not, I will make a point, and Chris can tell you, Chris is here, I will make a point of going back and looking up your question. And if it is in the comments, I can answer it next week for sure. Cause I'm here every Sunday at um, 7.15 Pacific, cause I'm in LA, 10.15 Eastern. Let's see. Steven said hi from Montreal. Hi to Christine. Hi, Amanda. Okay, I went way far back. So I'm skipping forward now. Hi, Kabita. Let's see who else is here asking questions. I wish there was a better way to do this. Samuel said he needs a grandma. So if there's anybody who wants to be a grandma for Samuel, that's another one. Elise is in California. I am too. Nice to see you. Hi, Jackie, Robert. Um, Chad said, I'll support it if you try to do a matchmaking service. I'm going to get in so much trouble, <laughs> by the way. Hopefully not. But I didn't even ever mention that to anybody else at your tango. And I'm certainly far from the boss here. So <laughs> it's just, I think it's a fun idea. But I'll have to play around with that. Uh oh. Okay, let's see. Anne said, I've got a great voice boyfriend. He's the best ever. Married, keep it sparky. Great, I'm very happy for you, Anne. Uh, Teresa said, serious, it was finally separated for two years. Okay, um, so, you know, yeah, I mean, I get that it was serious, but I still think you probably need to take a break. Jenny Lynn said, after watching some of this, I think the advice I can give everyone is, regardless of how long you're with somebody, they came into your life for a reason. Uh, we might not know exactly what that reason is, but there is a reason to bring you closer to yourself or your family, to bring life. I'm sure that that probably went on farther, but Facebook is clipping all of my messages right now. Um, and I, I, I hear your perspective, Jenny. I know a lot of people, that's very helpful to think of things that way. So if that helps anybody else who's here, I think sometimes when you're 
in the, the moment of trying to make a decision about what to do, it's really hard to focus on that. I think that that can be more healing down the road after you've broken up. Um, and so I think that what I really try to, to focus on in the moment of making that decision is how are you feeling to like, how is that person making you feel today? And is that the way that they make you feel the majority of the time that you're either with them or the more majority of time you're involved with them? And um, if they're not making you feel good, then the only way you can feel good again, honestly, is to take a break and either have them come back for something that's better or move on. But, but yeah, I think that, that Jenny, that's also very helpful. Pamela said, um, Teresa, you need to just move on. A man that's been in a relationship that long does not want to be in a steady relationship. I have a friend that's going through the exact same thing and they've been dating for two years. Well, yeah, but I mean, and that's why, you know, I do want to give, um, I'm just looking at the time because I have to pick up my kids in a little bit. I, you know, I do want to just give Teresa that, you know, empowerment of the fact that she gets to decide also what kind of relationship she wants to have with this guy or is willing to have with this guy. And so that's why I, I still think, you know, she might, and I don't know like what stage of life you guys are in, if you've been married before, if you haven't, if you want to have kids, you know, where, if you've both been divorced, I don't really um, know where you are, Teresa. So I would say that, you know, do give it some thought. Like, are you cool with having an open relationship or not? And um, if that's, you know, just a deal breaker right off the bat for you, then, you know, yes, absolutely agree with Pamela. Anne said, been there, done that, second time around. Another request for nudes that Facebook won't let me send anybody. Let's see. Teresa said he's in therapy. I got him to go weekly. So that's great. I mean, you know, again, like Teresa, I'm not saying like never you guys will end up being together. There's definitely a chance that you will. But I just think that he's going to need some like space and freedom to come to that on his own. Chris said been divorced for two years after being married for 23. And that's about right. Yeah, so, you know, from the guy's perspective, there you go from Chris. Uh, Robert said, may I be soon, please? I think you mean to answer your question, but I don't, I didn't, I've now passed every question I already saw. So, Robert, if you have a question, if you want to drop it in again, too, that'd be great. Chad said, it's pretty hard for me to trust some females because my ex-girlfriend had three abortions behind my back. Wow, that would be, it would be hard to trust somebody about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that you, you know, but the, you know, here's the thing. Everybody, I mean, Chad, I don't know for sure how old you are. I've seen your picture a few times. So I'm assuming we're kind of somewhere in the same general generation or something. Um, it's really hard to get to this point in your adult life without ha ever having been betrayed by somebody. But I think if you also look at your work life, you've probably been betrayed at work too. And if you think about friends that you've had over the years, maybe you've had some betrayals from friends. And if you, you know, have family that you have, you know, been around, probably some issues with your family. So I think we get really like stuck on that trust issue within our intimate relationships. Whereas we kind of like let it go in the rest of our life. Like, okay, that was that friend. It's not like you then necessarily don't I mean some people do but you don't necessarily not ever trust a guy friend again just because you had a guy friend who was a douche and did something bad to you his fellow guy so you know I think that that's just a part of life and it's not that it makes it any easier to trust but in the moments when you're not trusting if you can just sort of stop and recognize okay that's my trust issue is it really about what this person this woman is doing right now or is it about the women, the, the woman who had the abortions? I mean, that's really messed up. I'm sorry that happened to you, Ch you know, Chad. That's really, really, um, I'm sorry she didn't include you in that decision-making process. But we've all, you know, we've, we've all had, and, you know, you, it's like you get to make this decision now where you can open yourself up to potentially being hurt again and betrayed again, which is scary for everybody. Or you can just, you know, keep tapping in to remind yourself that's about 
the chick who had the abortion. It's not about the woman that I'm hanging out with right now and try to find love again. Um, let's see. Rayhan, Rayanne said, um, hi, Chris said, good rule. Victor said, move on. Everybody's so bossy. Uh, William said, you work at the Colorado. I don't know what the Colorado is. Teresa said, I dated him when he was two years separated. Uh, Yvonne said, Elise and Victor disappeared. Maybe they got a room. Were they both looking for somebody? Uh, well, Victor's right here. He said, it's not love, it's lust. Pamela said, she's not even looking at your other messages. I don't know who that's from. Who, whose messages? Are you saying I'm not looking at the messages? I'm trying to talk. It's hard to read and answer messages at the same time. Let's see. Teresa said, it's hard for me. He doesn't do PDA either. So yeah, like before you guys have the conversation, I would really, cause you don't want to keep having like little conversations, like a conversation today about being called his girlfriend and a conversation tomorrow about, you know, admitting it's a relationship, whatever that means. If that means Facebook status, if that means just saying it to you, whatever that means to you. And then have another conversation the next day saying, you know, I want PDA, I want you to, whatever that means for you, I want you to hug me, I want you to kiss me, I want you to hold my hand in public. So, you know, go ahead and write down a list for yourself. You don't have to have it in front of you when you talk to him. But really think through and, and just have one, hey, totally, again, totally non-judgmental, not mad at you, not complaining, not nagging. I just want us to be really open and transparent right now with each other about where we are and how we feel about it and where things can go. And these are the things that I'm struggling with right now and I'm hoping you can help me and maybe you can let me know if there's things that you know you are struggling with that I can help you with and, and make it that kind of like, let's collaborate on how to make this the right thing for both of us. You know, and it sounds like, I mean, if he's listening to you, if he's going to therapy, he's doing all this stuff. I mean, there's obviously a connection there. You know, I doubt this guy wants to lose you. I just think that after divorce, it's just really, 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 really hard and scary to commit again right away. Uh, Christy said, hmm, I'm totally unhappy. Oh, hun. I thought you said, hmm, hun, I'm totally unhappy in my marriage. I cheated because I'm so painfully upset. Well, Christy, I really think that that's the reason most people cheat in relationships. Um, you know, having worked with divorced couples for a really long time, divorcing couples, and having lots of other people who've come to me to talk to me about their situations because they know that's what I do. I really think that people, they don't cheat because they suddenly saw this other person who was so amazing or because they were just, you know, lack, too lacking in self-control that they couldn't keep it in their pants or keep their pants on, however you want to say it. I think it really has to do with when there's some major disconnect in the marriage and your needs are not being fulfilled. And that could be sexual needs or it could be your needs for, I don't believe that sex and intimacy are the same thing. So when I say intimacy, it could be your connection with each other and however it is that you get that fulfilled for you. Um, it could be you're not having any like conversation. He's not fun. There's, I, you know, you know what your problems are. You know what it is that you're painfully upset about. And um, if you cheated, you know, I would look at, well, so were you doing that just because you wanted to get this need met somewhere else? Was there a part of you that was kind of wanting to do something that would be like, I will not say you're bad, but like bad enough that if he found out about it, he would end the relationship because for a lot of people, it's hard to be the one who asks for the divorce. Uh, it's sort of counterintuitive, but it's a lot of times it's harder to be the one asking than the one who's asked. So maybe it was your way of trying to sort of, I don't mean passive aggressively, like I'm not, again, not judging you. It's just sort of like, is it your, was it your sort of unconscious way of trying to get out of the marriage? But, you know, I think the key is if you haven't already been to marriage counseling or if you haven't already asked about it, I would have, you know, think about whether or not that's something that you want and have a talk with him about something that's something that he would consider. And if not, I mean, 
you know, you cheated, you're on here asking for an opinion about it. I mean, I think you want a divorce probably. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's okay. So, you know, if that's what you need, it's nobody wants that. Like there's, I don't believe there's anybody who actually, well, maybe Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt, cause they said that some whole weird thing about how marriages aren't meant to last for, I don't know. I've, I've kind of saw that one coming, but it, my point is <laughs> who didn't write, um, most people don't get into a marriage not expecting it to last forever. So of course it's hard and it's tragic and it's painful no matter what. And no matter which side of the fence you're on, you know, asking or being asked. But, it, you know, it sounds to me like that's something that you should start looking into. Um, Jesse said he needs a lover. So I guess in our matchmaking game, we need to have a lover category. Teresa said, I'll ask him if he wants marriage in the future. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, if that's really important to you, and he, he might not know the answer right now, Teresa, but he might. And, and then I would just say, you know, believe him, and then you can decide if that's what you want or not. Um, Christy said Middleburg, so I guess you're in Middleburg, Chad's in Kansas. Uh, Robert said, I love her, but need it been a year now. I feel really bad, Robert, because I feel like there's something you said that you need, and I don't, I, I haven't seen the question in there, so I don't know what it is, unfortunately. Um, but I really do wish I could answer your question. So Robert, I'm gonna look afterwards to find your question if I don't find it as I'm scrolling and get back to you next time if I don't see it. Uh, Jesse said he's in Ashland, Oregon. Don Felipe said, Teresa, let the fellas run a train on you. I'm sure you'll feel better. I don't think Teresa needs to do that. Let's see. Hi, Sanjeev. Candy in Albuquerque. Neil says, I was with my ex for one year and six months. She had major medical issues, life-threatening. I had to take care of her pretty much 80% of our relationship, meaning I had to um, carry her at times when she couldn't walk too much, take her to hospitals almost every week um, for some months, we got along. And then Facebook, <laughs> cut off your question. I'm gonna ask Becca and Joanna if they get this same problem and figure out, cause I really, Neil, I wanna answer your question and I can't read the rest of it. It's really frustrating, I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna, oh my gosh. I need to make a list now of all of these that I can't see. Let's see, Ashley said hello. Christy said, what should I do? We have almost 20 month old twins. You know, Christy, was that your question about? Yeah, you know, my personal opinion, I have two kids. My dog is making me crazy. Ella, sit. I have two kids too. It's never ideal. My younger one was three and a half when my ex-husband and I separated. So a little bit older than your, I mean, a year and a half, almost two years older than your 20 month olds. But still, you know, I know what it's like to have little kids and I know twins are so stressful. And you know, it's definitely something to look at is, it, are the problems in your marriage problems that have always existed or are they problems that arose after having twins? Because I mean, I know for friends I know I, who have twins, it's really, really stressful. You know, even people who have two babies really close together, it's really stressful. So I don't know if the stage of life or being exhausted is part of the problem in your relationship. I would look at that for sure. but. You know, I, I really think while it's, I, I do believe it's ideal for kids to have an intact family with two loving parents who love each other and love their kids in the household. When you're talking about getting a divorce versus having an unhappy marriage, you're not just juxtaposing those two different things. It's not, oh, my kids can either be in a house of two divorced parents or a house of a happy marriage. Like that's, there's no choice anymore for these kids to be in, in a house with a happy, intact family like that. So it's really not the right comparison. And I, I do, I think kids, I mean, it's been proven. There are studies, I don't, even though it's stats might, apparently I don't have the studies on me, but you know, kids whose parents divorce rather than stay in an unhappy marriage, learn skills like resilience. Um, they don't feel 
later in life, like they're to blame for their parents being unhappy because the parents, you know, stayed together for them. And because most kids know that their parents are unhappy. And so they know later if you say, well, we stayed together because of you, that's basically saying to your kid, it's your fault that I was unhappy my whole adult life. So I'm not saying it'll be easy. I'm not saying it's ideal, but if it, so the first thing I would do is definitely look at, is it, are these issues about this time of life? Have you guys explored marriage counseling? Do you want to give it until the kids are in preschool and things are sort of normalized a little bit? Because 20 months, you're still like shaking a little, you know, things are really different once the kids are in preschool and you have some time. Or are these issues that you guys always had and they're just the same and they're never going to go away? Uh, I think that's all really important. Uh, let's see. Alexis said, and then let me see what time it is. Oh my gosh, this has to be my last question, unfortunately, because then I have to pick up my kids or I might be in a lot of trouble with my ex-husband, which isn't good. Okay. Um, Alexis said, I'm seeing a guy for about three months. We started off great dates all the time now. Uh, about the last month he changed. Like when we hang out, it's the bar or movie nights and sleep over at his house and he started treating me bad, like talking to me with disrespect and yelling to the something. And then again, Facebook cut off your message, Alexis, but I get it. Well, I mean, I really, it, I used to think, and this is kind of like a self-involved way to think, but I used to think that there was something about me that like at the two or three month point, these relationships I thought were off to this amazing start, suddenly, would fall apart and the guy would suddenly be not interested or he'd be a jerk or just, you know, something would change. Like he was talking about the future and then he stopped. And like now looking at it, I mean, I'm sort of having my own epiphany right now on here with you. So thank you actually, Alexis. Um, I just think that that's sort of like the standard amount of time where two people spend a lot of time together, that things either like take off and keep going in a positive direction or they don't, you know, one or the other. So, you know, it sounds like for whatever reason, I don't know if it's that infatuation wears off after two to three months. And so maybe, you know, the infatuation piece of it is over. And so now he's just falling back into his normal single guy routine, but it doesn't sound and I can't read your whole message, but it doesn't sound like his behavior is really respectful. It doesn't sound like things that you're happy about. And that's even to me because, you know, what you're talking about where he's saying he's treating you bad and, and being disrespectful to you, that's different than a guy not wanting to commit. I mean, that's just not, you know, you've said it. It's treating you disrespectfully. So I wouldn't, like, immediately get on that and have that same... I find it so fascinating how these shows always like people have the same issue. Like it's kind of thematic. I would, I would do the same, the no contact rule thing. I mean, it's only been two to three months, so maybe not two or three months, but I would really let him know right now, like either you're in or you're out and he'll either change his behavior or it's that he's, you know, he's relaxed enough that he's not putting on his best behavior show for you all the time. And now's when you're actually seeing who he is and who he is, is not, good for you and I would wave bye-bye and because this is fairly new I don't even know that the no contact rule is warranted you know I mean I think that's really for people who've been together for like you know like Teresa like a year and a half a few years like you're really trying to figure it out you know each other you're just not you know at the same place as far as what you want to do with it but for something like two to three months I say cut your losses because if he's already doing this now, even if he's nice to you again for another week or so, my guess would be that he'll go right back to this kind of behavior because what you're probably seeing is just him. Um, yeah. So, unfortunately, I see that there are so many other comments here, but I do have to... Um, I do have to say goodnight to you guys. So I hope you guys had a good time being here tonight. I had a great time with you. You're always wonderful. Um, 
just going to repeat, there shall be no nudes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, maybe I'll bring some like Roman statues next time or something. I can hold up when people ask about that. I don't know. I'll think of something good. Um, yeah. So anyway, come back. I'll be back next week. Have a wonderful 4th of July. I'll be back next Sunday at 7.15 Pacific, 1015 Eastern. I know there are a lot more time zones you guys are on, but that's what Google's for. Um, in the meantime, my email address again is Ariana, A-R-I-A-N-N-A, -N -N two N's, not like Grande, at yourtango.com. And um, you can also follow me on Twitter. It's at Ariana Jarrett. And um, so A-R-I-A-N-N-A-J-E-R-E-T. My name is in the... Um, description on the video. And I'll see you all next week. Thanks for being here. Bye.